Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome back to another episode of Top Tier Talk. It is Halloween, and for a Halloween horror show that Chelsea put on at the weekend, let's start with you, Amir. Yeah, let's do it. Um, it's classic Chelsea, by the way, recent history to um, play Arsenal off the park last week and then get absolutely destroyed by a low block uh, Brentford team and be dumbfounded. Fair play to Brentford, firstly, for their defending. They absolutely organised and at the right times attacked us and rightfully deserved the win. Um, the issue with us, as I've said previously, and I've requested that Chelsea what Chelsea need is a striker, an experienced striker. That's something we don't have. So obviously Jackson's Jackson is quite raw and he's 21. He's just, obviously he's not going to be as smart as like a experienced 30 year old striker, which obviously I would have wanted like someone like Taremi, no bias involved, obviously, but we're, we're paying for it. We can't finish our chances. And this is why we're going to carry on losing games against low block sides. So yeah, classic Chelsea, to be honest. One thing I will say, let's talk about the resurgence of um, Kukureta's career at Chelsea. He's been absolutely wicked for us the last few games. And from a player that looked like he was going to be sold to United, looks like he could be having a starting spot at left back for Chelsea. So that's the only positive probably. And Cole Palmer. But other than that, obviously a horror show, as you said. So I'm ready for the smoke. Who wants uh, it first? How long's Poch got? It's a weekly question now. He's got enough. He's got enough. He's got into end of the season, 100%. He won't get sacked. Nice. Do you know what's funny? <clears throat> it gets to a point in like in bantering such a club so much that it actually gets boring. Like Chelsea are actually a laughing stock now for a god good laughing fucking stock that played your three football, four months man. like terrible. Did, yeah, did, did you win? Played you a played us off the park, but you didn't Doesn't get win. Anyway, you dumbfounded. We had to help you come back in the game. By the way, <clears throat> yeah, that's not well, you didn't win. Anyway, two 0 against Bedford Amir, as you, as Daniel said, Poch, and you said no. Um, what's who have you got next? You got a really t- tough uh, fixture yeah, list, yeah, list. You got Tot- Tottenham. You got Tottenham got away, Tottenham Monday, Man City at and, home, and we've got probably got United as well, which is probably the easiest easiest out of the lot to be honest. Coming up as well. Um, the thing with Jackson is, as I said, he's twenty one. He's raw. He's just not the eighty million that stupid United play for Hoyland, but it's basically the same thing in the same similar ages. Yeah, I don't and know stuff like that. Um. I, I do want to ask though, Amir. Yeah, I do want to ask though. Your 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 next five fixtures. I I, I want to I want to get straight into it. You've got Tottenham away, Man City at home, Brighton away. No no no, Brighton at home. Wait, wait, wait. Newcastle no, no, no. away. Newcastle. Yeah, Newcastle, yeah, Newcastle away, Brighton at home, and then Man United away. That is five tough games. Who are the five toughest fixtures probably to play? Yeah, I'd say. What do you think? Five, five, Have all five. five. What, what do you reckon? You know what? We do well against the bigger sides, so. I'm not too too worried about when? that. Liverpool and Arsenal, we played this season. We played absolutely brilliant. Probably should have won. You didn't win. You didn't win. Yeah. We didn't win, but we probably should have. So it's against the bigger team. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> we, play well. we play well against the bigger team. AEW. So, how well? Um... I, mean, I was going to ask. Wait, wait, I have one question. Uh, I mean, so you're playing Blackburn next. Let's say you lost to Blackburn in the Carabao Cup, then you lost to Tottenham at Tottenham, then you lose to Man City at home, and then you lose to Newcastle away, and then you lose to Brighton at home, and then you lose to Man United at Old Trafford. Would you still keep Pochettino? Yeah, if we're not in the relegation, so I'm sure. Listen, you can carry on with your. There's got to be some standard. There's got to be some standard. <laughs> and, all, and you can carry on with all of this, but I've seen improvements under Poch. We're obviously more possession, we're keeping more of the oh. ball. It's just in the final third that we've got issues, and it's been obviously a big problem with Chelsea for the past, probably since Costa. But mm. I, it's just, as I said, I did request this in the summer when you lot asked. I wanted an experienced striker, someone for a couple of seasons can come in, can finish, can find the back in it. A bit like a Giroud. I mean, when we had Giroud, he was scoring for us at important times and did help us in the Champions League. But just someone like that. Just for a, like a stopgap until who's we get... someone realistic? I was going to say who is your in January? Yeah, who would be your magic number nine for you? My magic number nine. I will do the magic one, and then we'll do the realistic. Magic is obviously Osimhen or Tony. Probably more Osimhen, but that's Ossiman a very or who? Good... Or Tony. Tony. Oh, Tony. Osimhen Tony's is realistic a... though. Yeah, Tony's realistic. They've asked. I swear they've asked for less. And he's back. He's back for no, January I heard as it was well. 80. I heard it was eighty, but I would probably. But that's want... nothing for you. Of course, it's nothing for us, but I'm trying to think of a realistic transfer, like a summer sign. That's like a summer signing, player. If you need that's a striker, like you need a striker. There's no point waiting that's another true, four or five months. months that's that's okay, let's say, let's say, let's say Tony that's isn't realistic. Who is realistic? Yeah, who's a stopgap? Someone like short term loan, short term loan or short term eighteen months. Someone like Teremi, as I said at Porto, 
just someone like that in it. Like you lot have had it before. You had Cavani for a short space of time, who was very good for you. But someone who knows how to find the back of the net, and that's what we need right now. Just someone because we're very, mm. very. As I said, the average age is like twenty two at Chelsea. Need to bring that up a bit, in my opinion. But so why have you signed Jackson? Jackson is for the future, as I said. Um, but. He can't hold the line on his own. I don't know why you're laughing. Hoyland's practically the same age, and you cost like triple off. Triple. How off. many? How many Champions League goals has Jackson have? It doesn't. How many Premier League goals has Hoyland got? Zero, <laughs> and gives away penalties. That's cool. <laughs> nice one. Yeah, was, was Jackson also gave away a pen, didn't he? No, which game? No, he scored against Luton. That's fine. That, that That's counts. true. Hoyland probably can't score against Luton, can he? We'll see. <laughs> they have, they've got them in a month. Well, so they've got them in a couple of weeks, so we will find out. Crazy, crazy, to be honest. Mm. But, moving uh, yeah, let's move on with Chelsea. Let's go, I, mo- well, moving on, yeah, skipping from that to a team who had a very mixed week. Chavez, Man United won, Copenhagen nil. And if you could just remind me what the scoreline was on Sunday, please, in your Manchester derby. I just want to hear oh, it from you. Me. I want to hear it, it was from three, you. It was 3 0 to Manchester. Um, we played Copenhagen last week in the Champions League. It was a do or die game, and I think Onana has Onana's the reason why we're in this situation, but Onana's also now the reason why we're not out of the Champions League yet. It's still not completely made up for us because I would say Onana cost us two games. Now he's brought us back in one. Um, it's we're still not guaranteed. I thought Copenhagen could have easily, you know, done more in that game. They actually were quite poor, to be honest, compared to I think they played really well against Bayern and Galatasaray before this. Um, away from home will be tough. That will again, I think at any moment we could be out the Champions League. That's the issue because the moment we lose the next game, we're out. So it, every game now has to be basically a win until maybe the last week against Bayern. Um, aside from that, it's nothing really for that game. I mean. Uh, good to see Onana three games now in a row he's played well um, then we played uh, the Manchester derby there was a horrific decision um, I'm going to be relentless now with this every week the moment anyone touches anyone in the box it should be a penalty in my opinion because that's so I thought Harry Maguire should have been sent off in that game I thought John Stone should have been sent off in that game I also thought Jack Reilly should have been sent off in that game based on that one decision Anthony Anthony should have also been sent off in that game 100% that's four players that should have been off the moment Hoyland physically assaulted and almost killed that player on the in the box because that's what it is if that's the bar and if they're if they're going to set the president that that's a penalty then that completely changes everything why is that not a pen for you I'm, I'm, I um, go- it's no if they want to stick by that rule then a lot of penalties before should have been given but fair enough we can't change the past but from now on i'm going to be i want consistency so i can't wait i can't wait for the next few games any little touch anything like that um aside from that they completely dominated us but it's not a shock really man city are a class above us so when a decision goes their way of course they're going to capitalise on that and they're going to beat us anyway. So this was, I'm surprised it wasn't more. This is actually one of our more impressive capitulations. It was only 3-0. We've lost 7-0. We're used to this. Like, this is us now. And I think they, the excuse coming out of the club this week is that everyone's uncertain about their job because they don't know about the ownership. Is it 1% for Jim Ratcliffe? Um, and they're saying that they all feel like they don't know if they're going to be here next year. I don't know if that is the reason why everyone is playing shit. I personally think there's one big issue. I think the most atrocious thing that's happened this weekend wasn't that result. It's what Ten Hag said in his press conference afterwards. They asked him if um, he's going to implement Ajax's play style to Man United, and he said he's not. He just fully said no, because he doesn't have the players, and he has been allowed to get some of the players he wanted. So if that's not what he's going to do, then why was he brought in? That's a question I think we all have now. Um, I think Bruno Fernandes shouldn't start for Man United anymore uh, for the unforeseeable future. Um, he doesn't play football. Uh, we need players who play football. There was, and I said it in my player ratings, there was one game where Bruno and Rashford did not play this season. We were outstanding in that game. We played football. We played with a genuine system. And that was with like B team players. It was against Palace in the Carabao Cup. The moment Bruno comes in, our whole performance relies on Bruno's performance because the whole team is built around him and Rashford. And the moment he doesn't play well, the whole team is screwed. So... But I just think the, that there has to be some like accountability. If Bruno's had five really bad games in a row, he has to be dropping out. You can't be invincible like this. If I had a job and I felt like I was this invincible, I wouldn't care either. I'd rock up and I'd always have that little, um, what's the word, insurance. I know that regardless of what happens tonight, I'm going to be playing next week. And that's what Bruno has and Rashford also. So they need to be dropped. There needs to be some standards because we've got Sancho over there who's been treated. To be honest, that's how the manager should treat a player. But if Bruno and all these players aren't going to get treated like that, then what's the point? It has to be consistent across every player. 
a few points that you made. Firstly, to the Copenhagen. Um, as much as Onana gets his praise, I think Maguire deserves a bit of praise as well for the goal. Oh, yeah. Over the way he's enough. played recently. So, yeah, that's mm. that's one that probably goes under the radar. In terms of United, I just think it's quite sad, to be honest with you. Um, with the Bruno thing, he's been playing on the right wing, though. Could you not make a counterpoint that he's better in the middle, in the pocket? So, he's also he played in the position? middle. He plays slightly better, to be fair, in the middle, but it's still not good enough. It's We haven't had a good game this season. We've had one, I'm telling you, we've generally had one good performance, maybe 20 minutes here or there in some games, but that's not a game. That's it 20 minutes the of... the same story last season, because obviously, as we said, no one knows what Ten Hag's play style is, and he has brought in a lot of his own players. So mm. you were just grinding results last year, and you kind of have been as well this year. So what's the difference? What's... Was the yeah, biggest... it's true. He, I mean, he had a play style at the start of last season when we had a full 11, but I think it's really unli- unrealistic to look at football in that way because no team has their full 11 available. I mean, I know Tottenham are going through an extremely lucky period right now where they do happen to have their 11 available, and that downfall will be inevitable. But with us, that is not what we should be looking at. We're not always going to have 11 players available. So, yeah, I, I mean, you're right. We do... The problem is then, the alternative question is, do you sack Ten Hag? And the How issue with that is... Him? That's my question to you. How long would you give Ten Hag? I would give Ten Hag till the rest of his life. And the moment he passes away, we'll get a next manager because there's no point. There's generally no point in getting another man in. It's not going to work. It's not going to happen. We've tried every type of avenue. Who are you going to bring in? McKenna, who's top of... I don't know what he's doing in the championship. He's second. Michael Carrick, do you bring in uh, Hansi Flick? I'm sure we'll be calling for Flick's head in two years. It's always going to happen with these owners. So, I mean, I'm sure Ten Hag shouldn't get that insurance that previous managers did, but at the same time, we've seen it now. I mean, I think what we should be doing is what Ajax did to their board, just start attacking the stadium. Start, uh, okay, I don't want to incite violence, but you know what I mean? Like, stop showing up to games. Do what you need to do. Don't do sit-ins. I don't know what that was, but... um. Like, we have to do something because now it's not the manager. And if you're generally going to focus your energy on the manager now as a fan, then you can hear how tired I am just talking about it. You're look, you're focusing on the wrong thing. And it's going to be, I'm telling you, in three years' time, like, oh, flicked, flick out, flick out. Yeah, literally, flick out. I'm sure that would be a trend. No, it's it's now, potch out. I have question it. I only blame on the, sorry, on the no. manager. Like, it's always the board with United. And I get it. I get it. Obviously, the, the stadium's a mess. The, the lack of obviously the dividends, the debt, etc. I understand that bit, but at the same time, Ten Hag's brought in players like Anthony, who've been absolutely mm. shocking for you. He's yeah, brought in Ten Hag wanted Casemiro Anthony, but he didn't. Looking, 60, 70 million on Casemiro is not looking like he was last season, as I said, short term for such a large amount of money, etc. Like Lissandro. He wanted never... Anthony, but not for 80 million. That That's on the uh, that side of football, which we don't have. They don't know what they're doing. We don't have owners who care about football. We don't have we don't have a sporting director. I don't I think one of the... Dan, you're a Watford fan. Watford on as well known club. Do you have a sporting director? I think every club does. I feel like, yeah, you do. We don't yeah. have one. We're Man United and we don't have one. Uh, we need someone on that side of... Because, by the way, there have been times when you haven't backed the manager and it's bad, isn't it? You don't back the manager with the players they want. Sometimes it's over. Like, you get literally every player the manager wants and you don't have someone with that uh, recruitment mind. And we we don't have a balance. I mean, Ten Hag's actually got every player he wants and it's not worked out. So we need someone so else with Ten Hag. to look at Ten Hag with them. He's got all, he's got the players he's wanted. No, but he's, he should... That's not his job. He's, he's a coach it's not his and job a manager. to ask for players to improve his team. Yeah, but we, we you have to have someone who corrects it. That's the whole point. This, of is, this is what I was so going to ask. Anything wrong, then? Hmm? I, don't, I don't understand. The two of of you, I understand the whole sporting director and all that. You need it. But at some point, you've got to look. Ten Hag is not like 100% like protected on all this. I feel like you've got to put some blame on him as well. Like, no, he is. He's at fault. I'm telling you, the whole thing about the play style, why did we get him then if we're not going to play Ajax football? And I think he knows that because Bruno's the captain. Bruno's going to be here for a long time. And the moment, I think the Bruno being in the team will never play that way. Um, same with Rashford. They don't play football. They, they're different types if Bru- of players. If Bruno's no longer your captain in your eyes and he's no longer putting in something that you'd want to see as a leader of your team, who is Mr. Captain for Manchester United then going forward? Johnny Evans? No one knows. No one Harry knows. Maguire. You know, who, who, would, who would you want? Give it to Maguire. You know, I want. Who? The problem is, you pick a player that their issue is that they don't deserve to be captain. They're not available all the time. Like it would genuinely be Varane, but Varane's not available. He doesn't play all the time. He's always going to be injured every now and then. Uh, Casemiro is not reliable enough. He usually is missing for games due to suspension or just injury or whatever it is with him. He they're just not. And Casemiro doesn't play well enough to be someone who's always going to start. His legs have gone this year. So, yeah, there's no one... I actually can't name you a player. More well, obviously blame on Ten Hag with them signings, to be honest, but, yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, and by the way, this, I, people are slowly realizing this is going to go on now for 10, 15 years. It's over now. Man City will like reign over us for a long time. You know how crazy it is when you see um, in our tunnels, there's Man City posters coming in. I don't even know why we allowed them to do that. The culture is rotten for them even allowing that. Their fans doing their celebrations and we're not even shocked 3-0. Wow. The, the thing it's is changed. as well is that like, because obviously Man United used to be this almighty like powerhouse of the English Premier League. But now, obviously, mm. as you said, you're a laughing stock. What would you say then? Let's say, for example, you get your way, like the fans get what they want. You get mm. a new owners, new sport. You get a sporting director, but you're still gifted with Ten Hag as the coach, and you still have the players. What you have? How do you mm. take this team that's obviously still has like the old owners kind of mentality of they can kind of boss about the team however they want with these mm. new owner mentality to say fuck this, let's go and push for what we used to be. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people want, they look at owners and think good owners, a lot of money. But for me, what I look at is an owner who's actually at every single match. They're yeah. there, they're always watching it. Sometimes they're in the dressing room, talking to the players. When you know, you don't know your employer, it's strange. Like these players, they don't even know who they're playing for. They're playing for a bunch of, a family that care about the NFL. Um, it's not just that as well. With the sporting director, at least, I mean, I, I shouldn't be here telling you suggestions on who we should sign. There should be someone out there who's obviously Man United sporting director, who would know even better than me who to get. And yet here we are, like, it's so obvious that they don't know what they're doing when it comes to that. The next step would be just get a sporting director, even if it's under this ownership, because I don't see what's, what's going on. Some... Hmm? What does Richard Arnold, Richard Arnold do? Oh, he'll be sacked. I think he's going to be sacked as soon as uh, Jim Ratcliffe even gets 5% control. I don't know what that guy does. Um, But the problem with Jim Ratcliffe as well is he's someone who's 70 plus who's going to get a gradual takeover. I don't understand that either. He could be dead, uh, bless him. Like He could he could be dead by the time he has 100%. I think I've brought this up before. So, like, I don't... There's so many illogical things that happen around our club. And it's literally... Uh, by the way, hats off to the Glazers. They've absolutely smashed it. They don't care about these results. The money they make, everything is still the same. The business is not affected despite this level of a shit show people the season ticket wait is 30 years it's 30 years to get it's that's the way and this is for a club that is not even functioning correctly they have bought the perfect product and they have done everything they can without knowing it to destroy it and it's still financially quite good i mean the the, the other point is obviously l said like obviously united had that dominant like period, so did Liverpool and it it's just a cycle, isn't it? Liverpool went down. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. The cycle that maybe happens. lasts like four or five years, but now she was saying it about ten, fifteen years. It's... It will, it will be ten really? fifteen. Years. You're if you're ten years deep already after Fergie left. Already. Yeah. I know you you could argue which we've argued before about like sort of Mourinho coming in. Was it Mourinho you won the Europa League under? It is the trouble. You've you've had you've had trouble. Yeah, that that fake trouble. But, that you know, the, the, but you've had yeah, sections. it's true. It, it is a fake trouble. It's not like a promising. Like you know how how you guys won the FA Cup, and I said it's not actually that. Like you winning the FA Cup was random, but now you finishing second for me is like more of a sign of how you're playing. And you know you feel like a bigger club now than you won when the than when you were winning the FA Cup, right? Yeah. You do, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. It's because the league tells you. It tells you very clearly how, where you are. So yeah, um, I I I think the day Ten Hag gets sacked will be a really sad day because after that it will be a detachment as to who do you get next. Cool, you're yeah. in, you'll be yeah. sacked soon. Yeah, exactly. I mean that'll be it because we've tried everything. Then we've tried every avenue of manager. Um, yeah, that's all I can say. So uh, moving on to the third and final team, uh, Chelsea lost, Man United lost and won. The only team with a hundred percent record, Arsenal, Champions League and Premier League, both got three points. Take it away, Elliot. What can I say, man? Life's good at the moment. And you could compare this to like the 2021 season when we first started this podcast and we still had the likes of like David Luiz at our club and Hickey B at our club. And we were, whether I think we finished like sixth in the 2021 season. And I still remember Chavez, a video that we put up onto our TikTok page, one of our first videos. And it was us uh, getting beat by Tottenham. And I was obviously quite depressed in that, in that pub about it. But look, 2 1 against the You set out as well. You were I wasn't. Well. I wasn't. You were. You were. I wasn't. Uh, verbally, you were. Is, I wasn't. I don't get why Arsenal fans get offended by that. It was okay to be Arteta out then. He, it was terrible. Yeah, but go on. <laughs> anyway. Uh... <laughs> Sevilla, uh, a tough ground to go to at the moment. I'd say they they are obviously at the moment. I think they're like ninth in the La Liga, so but they still got a strong squad and to go to their ground as well. Europa League, pretty much champions, so they're they're on route. It'll probably be you guys again, United and Sevilla on route to the Europa League final once again. Um, mm. So I'm pretty happy about that. Um, two great goals, if you ask me. Uh, Martinelli, great goal. Jesus, great goal again. Um, 
And then onto the Premier League, five 0 against Sheffield United. Uh, not a foot was placed wrong that game at all. Um, I think do you know what it is? It's it's kind of strange to put this now, and it's it's almost like inject it into me because it's it's so good to see that every player in this Arsenal football team right now, bar of course Cedric, because <laughs> maybe even Cedric is happy, but, but um. Everyone is in high morale. Everyone is in high spirits. Everyone is happy to be there, regardless of their playing time. Everyone's, you know, like happy to play for Arsenal Football Club and ready to go from like fight for that challenge of the title. And maybe, as I say, I said last week, we're third favourites and we can still fight for the opportunity to go into like a quarter final, semi final of the Champions League. So, you know, like there's not much to complain about. You know, there's there's not really a game that I'm looking to towards the this season, thinking, do you know what? The only one is probably maybe like Liverpool away and Man City away because obviously their grounds are absolutely stomping grounds. Also, Newcastle away is St. James's Park, where if you go 1-0 down, they're going to be absolutely on your case. Their fans, that's tough to come back from. But it's not necessarily fear. It's just a case of they're well known to be obviously putting our players off. But, you know, the, <clears throat> this is obviously the first time I've been on this pod in a very long time. So, it's it, you know, if compare it to last season when I was saying we're going to win the league, we're going to win the league. Compare it to now, I think you guys can agree. I think... Even though we had a very good team last season, I think we have an even better bench this season to be able to go, do you know what? Someone's injured or someone can't play this game. Odegaard, for example, against Sheffield United, we rested him because he's apparently been feeling someone something. So we put Emil Smith-Rowe on. Baller. You know? Jesus, we rested him and put Enketi up front. Got a hat-trick. You know, only came on for fuck's sake. Like there's, there's just levels to this team now that I think is so nice to see that on the bench when you think, oh crap, like he's not pulling his weight. Who are we going to put on? You think, yeah, no, Tommy Asu, great player. Do you know what I mean? There's, there's, there's quality on the bench now. And <laughs> one thing I will it's, say it's... is, um, like obviously as you said, the morale is high and it would be high. You're playing well, you're winning games. Um, and I do agree, your team has improved. I mean, Rice is probably top five signings, definitely in the league. So far, probably in the top world, two. and not he's not number two. I don't, I don't know. Maybe Madison will might have might disagree with that. But um, as I said, Eddie and Ketty, I think he's found his level with Sheffield United. I think that's probably the area you could definitely improve <laughs> on. But maybe if you guys get Tony, then I would be proper proper scared of you guys. I think that's probably the difference between you competing yeah. for the league and winning. The I, I I wholeheartedly agree. I and actually I think agree that's with that. The only thing I think is, I think yeah. Jesus as well. He's obviously a good player and obviously bringing everything together. But he's not a striker. You need a Clinical number nine, just a bit like us, but obviously you've got more of a developed and complete side because I think everything else is pretty good for you. Look. And people are intrigued to come to play for us as well. You know, it's like a project going on, as as we've said for the past three years under Arteta's belt. It's a project going on and it's still going on. So if we can, you know, find a way to reduce the price tag of Tony in January to, let's say, 50 mm. mil, that's a bargain. I don't even I, think 80 mil. I think you'd go for whatever you can to get a strike. That's what I'm saying. If we can, if we can bump it down because of like some oh, some scary stuff that he did in the past and we can bump it down somehow, I'll be all over it. I'll be like, get him right now. And, and that's it, the thing. Put a Ketty in that swap deal. Uh, and that's what we touched no, on before. What? You can't get, just... get rid of him, get rid of Eddie. Oh, but that's what we said. Touched on. Lower, lower prem quality, 100%. Three and Bruce, the roof, me too. This, this, this is what we touched I, on I'm before, afraid, though. Yeah. With, um, no, he's better, he's better than him, but... How many players have scored a hat trick in the Premier League? Rashford hasn't. Rashford hasn't. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's no surprise. Evan Ferguson. Yeah. yeah. But it's what we touched yeah. on before. Where obviously, Chavez, when we start, when you signed Hoyland and you, and he'd be lucky to get five goals. Ivan Tony is a fifteen goal a season striker. Yeah, well, he's there or thereabouts. Maybe even more for a team yeah. like Arsenal it, with yeah. a built team yeah. with a built team around as well. You got Odegaard, Saka, Martinelli. That's no different to Brentford, though. Ones. Surely, like they they've been fighting for the last few years. They've been yeah, they're a well oiled machine. But... Well, there's yeah, a stat about Brentford actually that they actually on the same number of points without Tony than with him. They have with they had him last season mm. and they're on the same number of points this year. So. Well, I do, I do want to say something as well about this season. It's it's quite it's quite a, a really interesting season because you've got the likes of Man City, Arsenal, Liverpool, Spurs, Newcastle, Bright, Brighton, yeah, Brighton, and Brighton a bit Aston off. Villa. I think Villa's Villa scale. seven Villa... teams that are competing for the Premier League title right now. I know it's obviously early days. You can call me what you want. Call We're me top four, top ambitious four. man, top four. No, no, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, there's a three point difference in yeah. these seven teams. That's yeah, what, that's yeah. how good it is at the moment. It's not like Man City's typical running away with it with like ten point advantage. No, but Man City weren't like this last season. You were. But what I'm saying is, it's more exciting now because seven teams are yeah. a bit between three point difference. We haven't you know had this in though, years. The the interesting thing this year is Liverpool. So I think the genuine title race will come down to Arsenal, Liverpool, and Man City this year. Uh, Tottenham for me will fade away once 
again in Once again, injury. Hopefully they don't. <laughs> no, 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 this is so unrealistic. What's happening over there? I don't believe. To be it. fair, to be honest, this, these are the exact same words you said to me last season about Arsenal's eleven as well. Do you remember? <laughs> That would fade away. No, These ones are going to ring true. This is Tottenham. I said, I said, I actually backed you last season at the start and then slowly faded away after that. And look what happened. But yeah, this year, the interesting thing is Liverpool. It's not just going to be Arsenal. City. I think Liverpool yeah. will be genuine. So it's yeah. good. It will be a good year of Premier League football um, as a neutral, if that's... Very, yeah. very... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Before we do, um, obviously, uh, close this podcast, Messi, Ballon d'Or, happy or not happy, oh, yeah. guys? Deserved it's or not fully, deserved? Fully Absolute deserved. fraud. Fraud. Deserved, oh, deserved for me. I think. I'm, yeah, on the, I'm on the Haaland, the Haaland bandwagon. Yeah. What I, did you I, say, me? I think Philly deserved it. Literally carried Argentina to the World Cup. I, I don't, don't know why this okay, is okay. a big five or okay. six penalty nonsense. I don't, I don't get it. Yeah, but okay. Let's let's say let's say let's exclude the World Cup. Probably the biggest tournament of all sports in the world. You can't just exclude it. Okay, I'm, the I'm, weight okay. of the World Cup is so big. And I'm saying, what else has he done? But it's not I'm case. not saying I'm not saying he didn't deserve it, but I'm saying I, I want you to I, I, back I, up what like other than the small week period where he dominated. I think that's scrap it, but that's is, it. The, is the wrong phrase. It's the Ballon d'Or isn't a team award. It doesn't go to Miami or PSG. It goes to Messi, and mm. what Haaland exactly. did was no, like, it was ridiculous. No one uh, in, in the Premier League Messi did that, as an individual well, player. Messi literally yeah, then, won them a World Cup. Yeah, but you could, have, you could have just given the penalties to Di Maria instead and then it would have no, been off. Di Maria gets the penalty. Okay, it's, it's ifs no, and buts. He's... Um, Carlo Moani scores that against Martinez in the 93rd minute, whatever it is. What did Messi not with the ballon? But that's... Like, like, no, you okay, just okay, proved no, your no, point, though. That's what I'm saying. What are you all about? This is what I'm saying. But if he scores that, what does he not with the ballon d'or because of one game? Because he didn't win the okay, World Dan, Cup. That's, 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 Dan, that's, Dan, I'll put it in simple maths for you. The World Cup happens every four years. The competitions that Haaland won happen every year. Times everything by four. Yeah, but Messi... okay. Yeah, but then you can throw it back to the 20, 2010 World Cup when David Villa was the top scorer for Spain and Spain won the World Cup. But guess who won? Messi. Yeah, but David Villa isn't Messi. Messi also is. Just oh, yeah, exactly. There the you go. The so it's, but it's fed to him. There you go, Messi. No, but he's the best operating. No, he's the best operating player in the world. So even I'm not when saying he, he didn't plays... deserve it, but it's a bit of a spoon fed fucking trophy for him, in my opinion. It's not spoon fed. Is it deserved? Did you see what you did I, I didn't say it was not deserved, but I'm saying it's a bit spoon. But, you know, Haaland will win it next year, and then everyone will complain about how Haaland is the face of the sport. And that, that sucks as well, to be honest. Someone like him. Being it's, it's a whole different debate, but, I think. Just let us know who you think or who you wanted to win in the comments. And that is it from us this week. Thank you very much for watching. Till next time, goodbye. <laughs>